What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR. You're sitting across from me this week and every week. I can't do this all on my own. No, I know. It's Desra. We owe NBC. Oh, copyright strike. <laughs> and sitting across from me, of course, is Brian Paul. And this week and every week on Why We Love PlayStation VR, in my breast news broadcaster voice. Breast news broadcasting! Breast news broadcasting. Did I say breast? We have, so we're announcing the launch of a new show. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, we take man. a look in the PlayStation VR back catalog, and we, uh, we we pull out an older PlayStation VR game. We blow the dust off of it, and uh, and we try to figure out if it, if it's gotten better with time, if the developers have given it any love, or if uh, or if maybe maybe we we look at it through the eyes of nostalgia, and it was great at launch, but it kind of sucks now. Interesting I, nostalgia I, already. I need to get I need to make that more concise. No, I think there that's has perfect. to be a way. That, that, it, not yeah. only does it describe what we do, it describes how we do it. And it's actually instating it. It definitely describes yep. that we're all over the place all the time. That being said, what game did we decide to review this week, Desiree? But it's why you love you folks love us. Yes, uh, the game we decided to review was Megaton Rainfall. Megaton Rainfall by Penta Dimensional Games, released all the way back on October seventeenth, two thousand seventeen. Jesus, we're getting close to a year now. I know, I, and you can say it's released by Penta Dimensional Games and blah blah. But it's actually it's pretty much one guy. Yeah, Alfonso del Cero. Cero. Yes. Yeah, he he I think is. We sell that, don't we? What? I think we sell that, don't we? Probably. He's he is one guy, um, and uno in, uno hombre. And it took him about five years to make this game. Cinco años. Pretty much by himself. It wasn't until much much later in the development, in like the last tail end of the development cycle, yeah. where he hired like four artists, mm -hmm. some voiceover talents, somebody made some music for him. Yeah. But I mean, ninety eight percent of this game was him and when we say like develop it's not like you know he you know got unity and cranked it out i mean he like built the game engine from scratch yep. himself which is it's nuts absolutely insane we learned from the thumper guys mm -hmm. that uh that that maybe maybe it's a lot of a lot of extra work <laughs> yes it, it is it is but on the other hand you end up with something very unique which i hate saying but it is very unique it is this this is one of the more one of the more unique titles, <laughs> right? But man, we got to stop using unique. Once you get that in the head, yeah, yeah, just this, yeah, this is this is a special title. This is something that I, I haven't seen before in PlayStation VR. No, nope. uh, this is something that maybe I haven't seen really anywhere else. You can draw comparisons to other games, but mm -hmm. but, but but really, this is no no other game does exactly this the way this does it. Yeah. The, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to say, uh, the, the main conceit of the game, it's basically, it's Superman simulator. It really is. Day. Yeah, it, you are this totally indestructibly, indestructibly, totally indestructible. Should we just start the whole show over? No, no, we're this, good, this, we're good. Yeah, keep going. Totally indestructible, massively overpowered <laughs> yeah. superhero um, that is tasked with saving humanity from invading aliens. And your father... Yes. ...is the, the basically the... The voice of the narrative. Well, either your father or a huge fan of '90s pop punk, because he keeps calling you the Offspring. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay, let's let's stop talking about this and let's start <laughs> talking about Crazy Taxi. Okay. Yeah, Ooh, that's the only thing I can think about when I think about the Offspring. <laughs> it's Crazy Taxi. Uh, but yeah, no, no, excellent point. But yeah, so it's like your dad, right? Mm -hmm. And and the whole gameplay loop, yeah, of this game is. Here you are on Earth. Don't worry, we're getting to the rest of this. Yep. Here you are on Earth, and you're given a superpower. Yep. You go, here's this, open this box, unwrap it. I, it. I, I bequeath to you supersonic flight. Sure. Right? Now, now you're flying. Right. right? And, that, and then you go, and, uh, and then you go, and you go on a mission. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the destination, yep. you follow the waypoint all the way around the world. Mm -hmm. Get to the waypoint, and there are some invaders attacking the city. And you blow them up. Yeah, I mean, very War of the Worlds looking invaders yeah. as well. And it's kind of a neat idea, too, because like, you fight them until they realize, oh, we can't handle this, and they kind of take off. Yeah. And they, they stop sending drones. And then you they take off, you kill them, whatever happens. You earn an exosphere, which is their name for the basically the, the bright energy thing you win yeah. every time you beat the bad guys. And then you get another power up. Yep. And, and, and then wash, rinse, and repeat for like 15 missions, something like that. Yeah, pretty much. It's about three and a half hours. Yeah. 
And at a certain point, like they just, the, there's a couple times where they sort of amp up a power you already have. Mm. You know, um, they make your supersonic speed into, I forget what they call it, but is it 13 trillion times the speed of light? I it's think, something it? inquantifiable. <laughs> For, yeah. So if you're, not, I mean, you're going to be overpowered, be freaking overpowered. Yeah. Um, it, which, is, it is pretty incredible. Which and, and it does let you say, you know, in the game, your dad or whatever flies you to the moon to show you that you got this power. Yep. But you can fly anywhere in the universe. So here's the thing, mm. okay? The number one comment I got on the Megaton Rainfall review proper, yes. like the, the four or five minute without parole official Megaton right. Rainfall review is... Why didn't why didn't you tell people that you could fly out further into the galaxy? Why did, couldn't you why didn't you tell people that you could fly into the universe? Why didn't you tell I'm like yeah. because because we don't want to ruin everything for everyone all the time. So Okay. Here we are, a year after launch. Ruining the hell out of it. Ruining the hell out yeah. of it. If we if, if that four minute review didn't convince you to buy the game, mm -hmm. then here's Thirty minutes of us talking about the game, deeper a deeper dive, and uh, and and, ma and maybe this will will give you all the information you need. But but yeah, if you just if you just played the game the way the game wanted you to, mm -hmm. you, this is not something you would just know, because because you would just you'd be like, right. okay, well the waypoint tells me to go here, and then it tells me to go here, and then it tells me to go here, and for the most part, you're yeah. you're you know you're trekking around Earth and hitting up the moon. And uh, right. but you're not really venturing that far out. Yeah, he does. He does kind of let you chase him around the solar system a little bit. There is that on, on the way to the moon. But yeah, it doesn't really say. Oh, you can go out of the solar system, out of the galaxy to into, other galaxies, yeah. other solar systems, other places. Like mm -hmm. just it's and it does seem it's like infinite. It, it's just what, you, yeah, it's, it's procedurally generated. Right. So I mean, as you're flying around, you see a little dot. You can focus on it, fly to it, and it will create a little solar system at that dot there. So. Yeah. Since since we're talking about it, mm -hmm. what what's the point of leaving the the predestined waypoint mission? Uh, it's cool. It is cool. Uh, there is more to that. Um, yeah, there are. You know, <laughs> I'm setting you up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I was, I was trying to deliberately not pick up and and yeah. Anyways, um, so there's the main game where you're fighting the bad guys, and we'll get more to that later. But there's also sort of a side quest where there are seven signs. They're called these kind of obelisks hidden throughout the universe that your your creator, you know, I, 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 I hesitate to use the term dad, although he calls you offspring. Your creator we're, we're, tells, go, we're going with the Superman motif here. Yeah. Let's stick with dad. Sure. Yeah. Um, he tells you that these things are out there and that they're the source of um, the power that the invaders, the kind of bad guy aliens, have been using to power themselves up so they can attack Earth and you need to go find them all. Uh, and eventually you discover you're supposed to find them all and destroy them. But what happens is when you find them, they give you a slightly different perspective on the story. Now, this is definitely something we don't want to spoil because I think once you've found all seven of these, uh, first of all, if you've beaten the game and you haven't found, found all of these, it explains the ending for you. The ending's a little weird. Uh, but second, it definitely adds another twist to the, the morality of what you're doing. And I guess that's as far as I want to say. It's definitely as far as we want to go yeah. with that. Um, but you said there's seven of them, right? There are seven. Yeah. And you found all of them in one sitting, roughly a half an hour, you said? Uh, yeah, half hour to 45 minutes. I, I will say, and I'm not going to spoil this either, once you figure out how to find them, it gets faster. So it probably took me as long to find the first two as if it took me to find the rest of the other five. Yeah, that, that was my experience with it yeah. as well. Um, but it, it's totally worth finding all of them. It's totally this. This isn't the longest game in the world. This is actually a no. pretty short game. So, uh, so if you want to get the most out of it, I would say on your first playthrough, you might as well take a break between missions mm -hmm. and go head out and explore. And not only that, some of the, some of the places these signs are hidden are, are pretty clever and interesting, um, and sort of yeah. But uh, so I guess we'll go back to on Earth where the planet is getting invaded. Mm -hmm. um, the invaders' ships uh, they basically have different ways of attacking and wiping out the cities. Um, and you have you know there's a very specific, hey there's a big red button hit that and it'll kill it. I mean you can just kind of like dump damage into the things, but it's a waste of time. Yes. Like a lot of this, it, even though it, there's no timer, mm -hmm. like since you're invincible, the only thing that, that causes uh, a game over screen is if 
too many innocents, too many civilians die. So the the aliens are blowing up buildings and they're doing their thing. Um, and there's there's a, a a meter on the side yep. that says you know here's the number of innocent lives lost. And when that that meter's full or when it's empty, whatever it does, um, it's you're starting that level over. Right. So you don't want to mess around. The sooner you can kill the bad guys, the better. Right. And they do have this big and it's it's so video game tropey like, to be like, <laughs> hey, not only is like a lot of times like when you're fighting a boss in a video game, mm-hmm. there's like this kind of semi obvious like weak spot. Right. Right. It's like, it's like, oh, you know, when he opens up, he exposes his face and you got to yeah. shoot his face. No, that's not what happens here. And this is a big red circle. Yeah. Flashing red circle. And it, sometimes it's, you know, like on the underside of it. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's right on top of it. Sometimes it's on the side. Sometimes it's got a tail and it's hanging down. But wherever that thing is, shoot the crap out of it. And usually in the first shot or two, it blows up. And so you might be thinking that, well, this sounds super easy. You have all these crazy powers that you guys are talking about saying you're really overpowered. The enemies are really, it's really easy to figure out how to beat them. Mm. And all I have to do is knock them out before they kill everyone in the city. So what's the problem? Here's what makes this game different and interesting and why it's better than any other Superman game. You are... Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, all right. This this is the comparison you want to make? Well, not any other... Why it's better than any other Superman game? I can pull out every (laughs) Superman game ever made. And uh, and we're not even talking about the same spectrum. Okay. This is why I, it's better than any. I got this. Okay. Better than any Ultraman game ever made. <laughs> Ultraman game. There we oh, go. Oh man! Now the comments just started filling up. <laughs> it uh, is. Okay. Th- what what the the point I'm trying to make is it takes something that if you read you know Superman comics or or people who write Superman comics they say one of the hardest things to deal with is Superman can do anything, right? Yeah. So what this does is it flips that around on you. Your weapons, your power blasts, they can damage the city too. So if you aim at that nice, big, obvious red spot and you miss, mm. you just took out a city block. Yeah. And, and I'm not exaggerating. Like, you you're, you have actually, there is one of your powers that if you fully charge it, will destroy the entire city. Uh, and if you miss. So it's not just, you know, it sounds like easy. It's like, oh, just find the red dot and hit it. No, you have to make sure you're lining up your shot that if you miss, because these things move and they move fast, that, you know, you're not going to go wild and, and kill a bus full of teenagers. Also, the greatest thing to do in this game is kill a bus full of teenagers. I mean, over and over and over. There is nothing better than just walking around and destroying buildings. Yeah, but... Uh, eventually, if you keep doing that, yeah, the, um, the game doesn't like you very much. Yeah, there, there is sort of like a breaking the fourth wall in the hint system. Most of the time, the hints work like any other game that has hints. You know, hey, go ahead, do this, do that. But if you do things like, say, get bored a little bit and start blowing up cities, mm-hmm. it'll say, hint, you're supposed to be saving humanity. Hint, most of humanity is pretty good. And hint, knock it off. Yeah. <laughs> and, until event, do we want to spoil that or? Why not? Yeah. So, so eventually it says, look, if you keep doing this, I'm going to take away your life. Your life. And it does. And actually, if you keep flying, it takes a while. But if you keep flying around to destroying cities, eventually, like, your health bar is just down to the minimum and it doesn't come back. Yeah. You are stuck with that minimal life bar for the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it's to the point where, like, it's not, this couldn't happen accidentally. Like, this is, this is like, right. I, geez, I'm pissed off at this game right now, and I'm just going to blow up buildings because that's, I'm taking my aggression out. Yeah. And, and, uh, and if you just keep doing that over and over, right. like, it is very clear that this is going to happen to you. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's not like punishing. And you get plenty of warning, too. Is yeah. it? So if you're like, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to ruin my game, you have to sit there, I mean, probably 45 minutes to an hour straight of just blowing up cities. You think it's that long? It took me a while to trigger I, it. I'm going to guess yeah. closer to 20 minutes, but, right. but but that's just sitting there and just blowing up cities and losing 20 yeah. lives easy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, see, we mentioned we mentioned that you do get all these superpowers, mm. but uh, we didn't really talk about all the superpowers you get. Sure. Okay. Uh, you start off and you can fly. You can fly. And then you can fly faster. Yep. Supersonic. And then you can kind of... Yeah, you get a little blast. A little blaster that comes out of your hand. And then that then you get like the, the destroy a city blaster. Is that the next one? Well, I don't know. I, well, oh, you know what? That, that I'm not, maybe I'm not going in order. Well, I think there isn't because when you finish the levels, um, you get like an A marker and a B marker, mm. and I think depending on which marker you fly to, you get that power, and the next missions you get, you know, trigger off that. But eventually, you'll get all of them. So your your mileage may vary. You might have a different uh, tech tree. Obviously, we did. Uh, yeah. So okay, there was a little blast, the gigaton blast. Yeah. There was kind of the heat beam. Yeah. 
Um, there was dashing, which basically you fly and then fly into something so hard. If it's a building, you smash the building, or you can actually drill a tunnel into the ground. Which I I, I don't know. I don't want to spoil anything yeah. here. I really didn't find much use for that. I think there was no. one hidden item that like they they like go get this item. It's hidden yeah. in the ground, and and then I never used it again. But that doesn't mean there's no other place to use. It. I just didn't there were a couple discover. enemies. There there's yeah. some enemies that drop burrowing bombs that you have to. Okay, I don't know why I don't remember that. That's strange. Okay. okay. Uh, there's also um, a telekinesis where you can you know, yes. pick stuff up, throw them around, and that's and that's another another way that you need to destroy enemies. Mm-hmm. Some there are some enemies that don't have that big red dot right. on them. They they drop these green bombs, yep. and you grab the tele with your telekinesis. You pick up the bomb, you throw it back at them before it explodes, and and then boom, one shot dead. Right. Um, it took me a while to figure that out. Did Did you figure out what happens when they drop the big green blob? The whole everything blows up. Yeah. Yeah. So they drop a li- eventually they drop a little green bomb, which is fine. Oh, I know how to deal with that one. Well, there's a big green bomb. Oh well, I'll just pick that up and throw it at it too. No, that's like a nuclear weapon that kind of will level the city. You need to actually pick it up and either fly it up into the atmosphere or toss it over a very large bottle body of water. Just toss it out of the green screen. Yeah, <laughs> that's sorry. It's like magic, right. magic all the time. Look, Brian has a hand. Brian doesn't have a hand. <laughs> Um, does has a head? No. Okay. Well, this 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 will kill the fourth wall for some people. There was somebody who had no idea that this is a green screen yeah. room. Like, see, can you not tell the perspectives off? I I, we're, we're both naked right now. Actually. Totally from from the from yeah. the head up. This is some awesome After Effects stuff. Brian is a master. Check that. It's seriously. Crazy. How hard is that to do? In After Effects. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have time for this. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so, so we we get tons oh, of time, time stopping. Oh, time stopping is so important. Yeah, especially when you know, like you see a bunch of enemies with those red dots, <laughs> and you're like, "All right, let's freeze. Let's freeze time and just go boom." Psh, boom, psh, yep. boom psh. Okay, good. I killed three enemies and no time has passed. Mm-hmm. It, it's very very effective. Uh, it, it's on a cooldown, and man, every time you have it, you should probably use it. Cause, yeah, <laughs> uh, these things are very important. That that's the one thing I will say. Like the cooldown time on these weapons is so long. It's it's long because they don't want you to feel overpowered, right? Even though you are overpowered. Yeah, but there, there's some like especially especially the time stop. I think I it's almost useless because you use it once and it's so brief. The time stop period is so brief that I I just wish it, either the cooldown was a little shorter or maybe the time it stop time was a little so longer. like a less of an effective. Uh, yeah, it just kind of like stops time a little bit and like ah you get that. And then it takes so long. It's pretty much you're not going to be able to use it again by the time you need to finish that level. You know, you know, we didn't talk about, which I think is crucially important for this game. Uh, Your motion sickness issues. So it's always it's always time to we we, we've got to catch up with you every week. You gotta have a graphic of like Des with a Barth bag, right? (laughs) Uh, Either you in a in a a blue and uh, red cape, (laughs) or or you with a blue and red Barth bag. Uh, Yeah, surprisingly, yeah. So. There are blinders on this game. You can um, turn them off. You can turn them off. So I, I kept them on, but even with that, I, I, it triggers the blinders in really weird yeah. times too. Um, but no, I, I had no issues with this. Nice. Yeah, um, it, it seemed fine. Like the type of flight you do, it is pretty much like you stay, like your point of view stays. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, you're you're as a, as a human being mm. um, playing this game with a DualShock Four. You are you are sitting or standing, and you are vertical yeah right like so so unlike superman that's like flying horizontally you know mm-hmm. you, you're just standing there kind of flying like this yeah right yeah uh, and i don't know if the game sometimes you can see your feet sometimes example, you can see your feet yeah. dangling down there it's, yep. it's adorable like big purple like <laughs> uh, translucent feet and tr- big purple translucent yep. hands uh, it but so so like unlike superman you seem to be flying around i'm not sure if the game wants you to think this or not mm-hmm. but you seem to be flying around standing straight up yeah just sort of like moving through space yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I would that that is one thing. Like, it doesn't f- the flight doesn't really give you that same kind of feel of like like eagle flight. Yeah, like you play eagle flight, you feel like you are you're soaring and moving, and yeah, yeah, it, it's it's very fluid. Right, and this is not fluid. It's just kind of like I move forward and I stop, and yeah. no, which is not to say like some of the, like the animation of like flying over the you know the side of the earth and seeing like the sun rise as you're that's really cool, but it doesn't have that same. Yeah, that, that fluidity of say again eagle flight, um, but yeah, no, no uh, nausea, na- nausea issues, nausea issues. Good. I, that's a bad. That, that is awesome to hear yeah. because um, because you know there, there there are definitely a few games out there where I mean 
the fact the fact that the number of things you're doing in this game mm-hmm. uh, you know between like flying like up into the stratosphere and, and you know and, and then diving back down into the earth and you yeah. go underwater and you, know, you turn know, on a dime actually that does there was a little wonkiness sometimes when you approach a planet so well, let's call it the star trek problem yeah. every time you watch star trek you see the enterprise come to the planet nice and easy like right kind of even with the equator. Yeah. Well, no, there's no such thing as up or down in space. So it's going to be coming from all these. So if you do come from the planet from a weird angle, and then as you're approaching the planet, it kind of flips. Yeah, the uh, the game sort of like re-centers its yeah. positioning. Uh, and that, ha- that was a little wonky. I hated that. Yeah. I hated it only because it, it kind of does this like quick flash. Right. Where it's almost like a slideshow. Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, I, w- I went from being, I went from going all the way through the galaxy and I'm like going all the way to this planet and everything yeah. was so seamless and, and like no transitions at all and then just to like kind of like reposition myself yeah. vertically I was like well, why isn't there like a why isn't there like a star blood you know hit R1 right, and yeah. L1 to kind of just like yeah. on this axis I think it's just the game really doesn't want you to be upside down I guess not at any point because it just uh, maybe the the game engine doesn't know what to do with you if you're doing that it's so it's just kind of like yeah so if you fly and say this is the planet you're approaching and you're flying this way yeah as you approach you'll just yeah. flip your perspective and that that flips sometimes is a little iffy but other than that yeah so i mean we we talked a lot about like how this game plays and how long the game mm-hmm. is and whatever um but as far as like as far as like the immersion and being inside the game um what what do you think of how all this looks um, yeah, looks is an interesting choice of word because it's a, it's a tough one to answer. It's very, it's very flat. Um, I mean, it's a, it's an enormous world, an enormous universe that doesn't have a whole lot in it. No. Um, which is funny to say because there's literally an infinite amount of planets you can go to. <clears throat> but as you're flying over the Earth, you know, we were talking like you can dead reckon yourself to say where where Everest is supposed to be or or places like that and just as you fly down there's just kind of these generic sort of textures and trees um and like the cities you know the, you'll Dubai is one of the cities and you no know, it never actually says Dubai but you're flying along and like oh there's there's the the palms there's the world oh there's the Burj Khalifa no Burj, I know that's not it it's the Burj something but that's it for like the whole city or you see, like, Sydney is another uh, city. There's a Sydney Opera House. And the bridge should be right there, but it's not. You know. Um. And see, all this stuff, none of this stuff bothers me. Mm-hmm. None of this stuff bothers me. The fact that, like, the fact that I can, I can, you know, the fact that it's Earth or Earth-like. The fact, they, they didn't even need to make it Earth. I wish they hadn't, honestly. Yeah. Yep. And so, so you, you know, you, you, you fly down in, at the Earth. And you can kind of fly down anywhere, and you'll end up running into a city. And you go, in, and as you get closer and closer to the city, the sense of scale in this game is just incredible. Mm-hmm. Because, like, really, like, you can start off, and the planet will be just this big in the background, and it gets close, bigger and bigger and yep. bigger. And as you get closer to it, and you, and, and when you fly, man, through the atmosphere, like through this, like, in, yeah. it's like the whole. I make sure that like all the comfort settings are off, so like the camera's shaking, <laughs> and you, you can just almost feel like the like here we go through and through the atmosphere, mm-hmm. you know, and and then like and everything starts to come into focus, and like he, he's like, oh, there's a city down there, and I'm heading toward the city, and as you get closer to the city, you start seeing like the outlines of buildings, and as you get in there, you can go all the way down the street level, and like then there's buildings all around you, and suddenly it's Grand Theft Auto, mm-hmm. but it's like, man, I was just way out in space, yeah, and now I'm standing on a street corner, I was like, in in that. Any set, any like any lackluster like when it comes to like the actual three D ness of like the immersion factor, mm-hmm. uh, or or even like the graphical fidelity of like what the city looks like once you're down in the trenches, yeah. like it's all forgivable to me because of what we just did to get there. Yeah, no, I can see that. It's, it's just a little, it's a little jarring because when you're in that mid level, like. The, the detail is so great because he actually, um, here, here's our Des Nugget, he pulled all the textures and all that from the maps from NASA. Yeah. Like he used, you know, and hey, if you're an American citizen, congratulations. I don't know if you know this, but any image NASA makes from any of its any of its technology, that's yours to use as you will. Oh, good. I'm using it for the thumbnail. Yeah, there we go. Um, and which this this gentleman, abs- uh, Alfonso? Alfonso, Alfonso de Cero. Uh, took full advantage of until it got to the actual, like, 
close-up textures and then it's just kind of like procedurally generated land yeah. which I, I can understand from a computing point of view why he chose to do that it's just it's like it, I mean you can literally like use it and I, I once I wanted to go and find Dubai again I pulled up a real map I was like oh, okay I can follow this coastline and boom that that's where Dubai should be and bang that's where Dubai was you know I, I just wish and I know why it didn't happen but if you could just like work out some kind of licensing with Google Earth <laughs> Just map this exact same game exactly as it is on Google Earth instead, and Des is very, very happy. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of with you, uh, and it is, it is really strange to say, here's not only Earth, but our galaxy, our solar system, our universe. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, here's a bunch of other universes, and then kind of say, there's not really a lot to do, like. Be- yeah. Beyond going from mission to mission, sure you can go for like a half an hour and go find all the all the pillars. What are they called? Uh, signs. 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 They're they're pillars. They're pillars. But they're signs. <laughs> um, but it's like, I saw the sign. But like, <laughs> and it opened up my mind. This this is this is the weir- weirdest episode ever. <laughs> um, but there's just there's just strangely there's just not a whole lot of other stuff to do. It's like okay, go find those seven signs. But that is that really why we created this whole universe? For you yeah. to explore is just to find an extra half hour of, of stuff. Um, there's nothing. You're going from like waypoint to waypoint, like between missions. And you're like, okay, the the invaders are attacking again. Go to the next waypoint. And you're like, okay, sweet. And on your way to the next waypoint, there's nothing. It's just yeah. he, here we are. We're just flying there, and the experience of flying is the game until you see the invaders, kill them, and then fly to the next waypoint. Why aren't there invaders? Why don't you run into invaders that are coming? from their planet sure. to Earth. Like, why don't you run into them on their way? Like, why don't you randomly encounter, like, different things? Why is it just you and the invaders? Why isn't there anything else going on here? I, I think the easiest answer to that yeah. is Alfonso is clearly a gifted uh, programmer yeah. and game designer, um, incredibly unique, but he's not much of a storyteller, you know? And that's that's where this... I mean, he's got the, the core idea of basically two protagonists... Um, the invaders are barely even uh, part of the plot, and it's kind of their interaction. But there's nothing else going on. You know, if if he had had someone on his team was a little better at like breaking a story or coming up with ideas, you could have that. You could have you know your character come up and maybe even land on like one of the invaders' planets and seeing their innocence. It'd be amazing, or, or, or something like you know. And and I I don't want to fault him too much because obviously like this is a massive accomplishment for like one person but that's i think where it really does fall short not seeing all the opportunities the storyline could give you you know like you could have taken the technology he has and absolutely expand the story expand the world use the the all these wonderful tools to tell a more engrossing story but that's just not where he was going with this i guess and 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 it's like an arcade game i do i you're you are right it's very much an arcade game um. Yeah, an arcade game with just a little bit of heart. <laughs> it's like a Defender. Or, yeah, Defender. It's Defender. And I, and I hate telling developers what they should have done or what yeah. they should do. No. Uh, that that is that's my least favorite thing to do. Like I, you know, as as somebody who I am, like I'm a musician. I'm a singer songwriter. I, you know, I'm, I'm I'm generally a creative person. I like to think of myself as a creative person. You guys can all rally up against me here. Um, but the fact is, is that like when somebody tells me what I should be doing. Very seldom do I go. That's a great idea. Yeah. Because because what you create is your own vision. So when a bunch of people <laughs> online go, "Hey, Alfonso, why didn't you give us move controls?" Well, he did. Fast forward. He <laughs> finally gave you what you wanted on August fifteenth of this year. So like last week. Um, and he finally gave us the much requested mm-hmm. move support. That's why we're doing the episode, kids, because we finally got the move controls. Yeah, and, and I will say my usual rule of I want move control. If I can see my hands in a game, I want the move control. Sure, absolutely. That's kind of like one of my rules for immersion. Because mm-hmm. if I can see my hands, I don't want to be stuck to the... No. No, you don't. No. This... I don't... I don't see, okay, there's, there's two things I need to say. Okay. One. <laughs> buy it. It's a reason to buy a PlayStation VR. It's the... It's the... <laughs> oh, wait, that's not one. No, that's, yeah. Okay, oh. so the first thing I have to say is... That's my job. Is, is, uh, <laughs> is when, when a game like Don't Knock Twice comes out, and it, I said don't, and it, <laughs> and it only supports a one control scheme. Yeah. There's a reason for that. 
The developers had this in mind, right? And then we beg and beg and beg and say, please give us the other control scheme. Right. Give us full locomotion. Give us, give us a dual shock. Okay. Like, okay, now I feel like I'm driving around the house in a bumper car. Yeah. Right? It, it works, but it's not the way the game was designed. So, unfortunately, I, I, I feel Gen like... VFR. It's not... Exactly. It's, it's retrofitting a game mm. with a new control scheme. I mean... It's it's way more work than any of us think it is. That that's the only thing yeah. I can come to terms with is that it's just this game was made with the DualShock Four in mind, mm -hmm. and when we finally got the move patch that we all desperately wanted, there was no way it was going to be what we really wanted. Yeah, because you just can't say okay, suddenly it's not head tracking anymore; it's move tracking. Suddenly you can't say okay, it's right. Yeah, and, and so so all of these things had to had to change, and we got what we got, and it wasn't very good. Yeah. No. Like, you have to literally raise your hands up to fly up, and then put your hands down to fly down. And within five minutes, mm -hmm. my arms were tired. Well, it wasn't just that. It wasn't just up and down. Like, you actually had to angle the move controllers. Because if you could just lift your arm, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I was lifting my arms, and I was yeah. using one hand for a while, and I was, like, doing even the Superman pose, being like, up, up, no way. You know, I was like, yeah. let's make this fun. It wasn't fun. Yeah. Um, you couldn't... I wanted to, I wanted to like, fire like this, and, and that sure. you can't do that. Um, right, like, like the satisfaction in like Skyrim where you can do th so one thing with one hand and one with the other. No, it doesn't really... Yeah, yeah and, and just the movement in general, I, I thought the precision with the DualShock 4, I know you don't totally agree with me on yeah. this, I think the pre there's so much precision with the DualShock 4, the move controllers kind of take all that away, mm -hmm. and I can't imagine trying to play through this game like... Yeah. Like trying to trying to like freeze time, and then okay, okay, kill it. Let's let's hit one, two, three of those red spots, and you know take out enemies. While the front, I can't yeah. even imagine trying to do that with the move controls. It it doesn't work well. And then they do, and then on top of that, they added forced blinders. Mm. So and and you have to turn by going like this, like yeah. cocking your head to the side. I'm like this. Talk about eagle flight. Eagle Flight what? had this that mechanic down. Mm -hmm. This is nothing like that. And that's where I'll say I can understand why they had the force blinders there because when I first played Eagle Flight, um, that was absolutely what made me sick. Yeah. Like, was the turning your head like that? I was, I was done. <laughs> so, you know, I know, I know we don't like force blinders. Take a deep breath. But that's probably why they put it in there. Probably. Yeah. Um, I think I, from what we heard, mm -hmm. we heard the blinders will probably be going away. Yeah. Um, for, for people who don't want to use them. Uh, but we I think we are kind of stuck with this new control scheme if you want to use the move controllers. Which, don't. Yeah, it's just... It's just Easy solution. Yeah. I, I think... I think I don't think that pentadimensional games would have given us move support mm -hmm. if we didn't, like, beg yeah. for it. Um, I think that's it. I, there, was, there was a two. I can't remember what two was, so we're going to move okay. on. Okay. Uh, sure. I think it is, however, time to rate this game. Absolutely. So, going back to someone who stole my I have one job on the show it's one thing I get to do and that's it all right <laughs> so our rating scheme is pretty simple it's one you have to buy this if you have a PSVR it absolutely has to be in your catalog uh, this is the kind of thing we wanted when we first heard about VR you need to get this uh, two is yeah sure why not uh, if it's on sale or if it's a genre you particularly like go ahead grab it we're not gonna make fun of you uh, three is no do not buy this. Friends don't let friends buy crap. We need to vote with our wallets and tell developers we will not accept this treatment. So, uh, one, two, or three. What do you think? <clears throat> so, I like to go on a little tangent before yeah. I divulge my score. Um, and I think I know what the tangent is going to be. But. Leading up to launch, mm -hmm. leading up to the launch of this game, if you weren't specifically following like Alfonso's blog, yeah. Uh, if you weren't like following the development of this game, if you'd only heard of this game when it was like, "Hey, this is going to be a PlayStation VR game," like when that trailer came out, that was like, "Hey, this is also PSVR," yeah, um, then you didn't know a lot about this game. You didn't know, uh, you, you didn't know how long it'd been in development or how many people were making right. it. You didn't know anything about it, um, and so uh, getting closer to launch just reminded me of like Archangel, where like we just didn't know enough about the game, yeah. uh, and then like, but there was like a a little, there was a much, there was a bit of a longer lead though because just a couple weeks before if you didn't know then you did that it was all made by one guy and on top of that it had been in development for five years yeah and then at the absolute last minute they like I, th I think the game was supposed to be out then they delayed it for an extra month and mm -hmm. right around that time they slapped a $15.99 price tag on it yeah and so if you didn't know what kind of game you were getting if you were unaware of like the scope of this game the scale of this game um, how long this game was going to take you to play beat whatever yeah then like at that point just a couple weeks before launch 
this all of these factors kind of came together to say this this basically made by one guy in a six sixteen dollar game. Yeah. Um, so so keep all that in perspective when I also give you the score. So low your expectations accordingly. Well, <laughs> yeah. well that that's sort of the thing, well, right? Yeah, yeah. We like sometimes people say a bad game is bad no matter how much it costs, and I don't agree with that. I I agree with there are good games. Sneak king. There are <laughs> there are good games that are worth a certain amount of money. We we gave yeah. head we easily gave headmaster a one. Oh yeah but if it was a 60 dollar game we wouldn't have given headmaster a one no we would have said this is a solid two because if it comes down to a, t- a normal price at 20 dollars right. on sale then but you have to take in price mm-hmm. price cost whatever is one of the many many factors we rate games on yeah right um so that being said at the price point it's at 16 dollars and 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 what you get for that in mm-hmm. in, in as we said a very unique experience <laughs> uh again never played anything like this yep. this is a one because it's it's i can't imagine having not played this game and and so when when somebody has their vr legs mm-hmm. i go all right you gotta try this it might not be the most amazing game you've ever played but and you can play it in non-vr yeah don't oh, yeah. do that i tried it today <laughs> and i was like oh i don't i have no desire to play this yeah. game outside of vr but in vr it's like wow wow i've never thought in my entire life in my entire life, that not only will I be playing a game in VR like this, but that I'll be able to fly up way into other galaxies and fly all the way back down to Earth yeah. in a seamless, no, almost no transition experience. It's it feels it feels incredible, and for that reason, I need to give it a one. Yeah, I'm I'm actually gonna back you up on that. You know, if our three is, we need to tell developers. No, we're not going to accept this kind of thing. I think a one should be. We need to tell this developer we want more. Yeah, give it, give, give us more. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I I kind of offhandedly said uh, when we were talking, you know, that it's a, this feels like a really good demo, and yeah. and, that's, and and that's kind of like you know throwing Alfonso under the bus a little bit because he put a ton of work into this. It's, it's way more than a demo, but it really is like here's a great engine, here's a great foundation to you know hand off to some storytelling genius hey you know what double fine alfonso shake hands come on yeah. those guys oh but yeah. just someone with some some you know really interesting storytelling chops who could use this engine alfonso was created and just make something just really sing um that being said i i totally agree it's a one um the price is right for what you get uh, it's a unique experience, uh, and I again, I, I really think the best, uh, very unique, and I think the best way to like handle a super powered superhero, yep. like it, it's not about you not taking damage, it's about you protecting people. I mean, that's what a superhero should be doing, and you've got to use all your powers, this amazing power, to stop the aliens, but also not accidentally wipe out half the city while you're doing it. Very and, true. I, and I think that's a, a fantastic message, not only, but also a really interesting uh, game mechanic. So I, I want to make I want to make something you said even simpler. Yeah, I don't want I don't want pentadimensional games to hand off this engine. No, no, no. I, 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 I no. I know yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. What I want mm-hmm. is Megaton Rainfall too. I, I I want this is a great foundation, uh, and I, and I think again everyone should try it out. Everyone should play it. But man, oh man, now that they have the the basic mechanics down, mm-hmm. give us more. Give us everything yeah. we just said, all the stuff that was missing from the game. Uh, I, I will take the exact same world, the exact same galaxies, the exact same procedurally generated everything. Don't don't spend another second making this world look any better than it does. Just give me more stuff to do in it. Yeah. Give me more stuff to do in it. Give me some NPCs to talk to. Get, go, let me go. Let me go fly over to Lois Lane's house and uh, and make sure she's okay between missions. Maybe him and the the Marvels team can work together. I, I love Marvels. <laughs> Marvels is a one. You're all on crack. Just, just talking to the NPCs. That's it, man. I want a sequel. I want a bigger, badder, yeah. bigger sequel. Yeah, and actually, I mean, from the story that is there, not that it ends on a cliffhanger necessarily, but there is good reason for your character to revisit the events of the uh, the game. So, yeah, that could work. So, we got a couple of ones. So, yeah, go buy it. Go buy it right now. No. Go buy it. 16 yep. bucks. Uh yeah, it pretty much does it for another episode right. of Why with PlayStation VR. As always, we want to know what you thought of Megaton Rainfall in the comments below. Uh, did, did, you, did, did you play it? Did you find all the signs? 
Did, did you see the I full story? Signs. Stop it. Stop. Simple just just stop tonight. it. it I, why? You know, I, I set a bad precedent for singing <laughs> on the show and on all the shows. Yay. I sing on all the shows. We need to stop that immediately. No, we don't. Yes, we do. No, we don't. Also, what other games do you want us to talk about? This was a highly requested one. Definitely. Especially with the move control support. Yeah. I'm so sorry. We're so sorry. So sorry. Bad things happen to good people all the time. This is another. <laughs> uh, but let us know what other games you want us to play. Obviously, we only do things because you ask. I got to bring the pink tie back. They asked for it to come back. For another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR, I'm Brian Paul. I'm Des. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>